I'm Keith Knapp, and I'm president of the Early Medieval China Group, a group that's dedicated to studying the history and culture of the period also known as the Period of Disunion, which began in AD 220 and lasted until 589. This era is characterized by political fragmentation and military violence, yet it produced incredible cultural achievements and laid the institutional foundation for the brilliant and cosmopolitan uh, dynasty, the Tang, which followed in its wake. Our society, since 1994, has produced a scholarly journal known as Early Medieval China. In 2011, we are now producing our 16th volume uh, with the help of Maney Publishing. Maney Publishing has given it a very sleek and professional look. What hasn't changed over time is that early medieval China is still the best place to find the most cutting edge information about this period. One of the great things about the history of this period is that archaeological discoveries are constantly providing us with new information and information that often contradicts our previous formulations about it. And this year, there's a very exciting discovery of what is purportedly Cao Cao's tomb in the city of Anyang in Henan province. This tomb is truly of regal size. It's 740 square, square meters and has abundance of grave goods. Uh, in fact, even though the tomb has been robbed numerous times, archaeologists have uncovered 250 artifacts, and amongst them are even gold and silver ones. Interestingly, the tomb had a skull, and that skull was of a 60-year-old man. Historical sources tell us that Cao Cao was 65 when he died. But the real clincher that this indeed was Cao Cao's tomb are these stone tablets that are inscribed. And they basically say this spear was used by the King Wu of Wei. Well, it so happens that King Wu of Wei is Cao Cao's posthumous title. This find has caused this incredible stir across China to the extent that three hours of the excavation were broadcast live on TV. However, shortly after the, uh, the discovery, a number of scholars doubted the authenticity of this identification. And their focus was precisely on these inscribed stone tablets. They argued that the grammar was far too modern. Moreover, the language found on these tablets is what you would expect to find on a museum marker, not on a, a, a artifact found within a tomb. They also noted that many archaeologists were falling over each other to say this was Cao Cao's tomb because Hunan province was very interested in having a lucrative tourist attraction. Countering these charges, in Beijing, there was a meeting of 120 eminent archaeologists, and these archaeologists said, no, this truly indeed is Tao Tao's tomb. Well, no matter who's actually buried in the tomb, what this all shows is that Tao Tao, 1,800 years after his death, can still provide us uh, with mystery and keep us guessing. It also shows that powerful state interests can still shape and influence how history is written and displayed in China. Hopefully, in the near future, an issue of early medieval China will have an article that puts this tomb in its proper archaeological and historical context, even if it really doesn't tell us who's buried in that tomb. Thank you.